Aptogen, bioengineering novel solutions for medicine, research, and industry. Current methods of drug discovery are time-consuming and uncertain. First, sufficient knowledge of the target disease is required in order to begin molecular bioengineering of drug candidate molecules, after which in vitro assays predict whether the drug candidate will promote viable interaction against the target disease. If not, the molecule is re-engineered or modified until the assay predicts success against the disease. Even when the drug candidate is first tested in vivo, the majority of drugs exhibit at least some cross-reactivity with other non-intentional target sites. Other issues such as absorption, distribution, metabolism, excretion, and toxicity may pose additional problems. This leads to more bioengineering, in vitro assay testing, and more in vivo testing. This cycle continues until, in many cases, the therapeutic benefits outweigh acceptable side effects of the drug candidate, thereby allowing it to then enter human clinical trials. As a consequence, the cost and time associated with this traditional method of drug development is expensive and quite slow. In addition, only one in a thousand drug candidates make it to human clinical trials. What's needed is a new class of pharmaceutical molecule and the process to develop them. A method to significantly reduce the time and cost for drug development from lab bench to human clinical trials. This process is called aptogenesis, in which a new class of pharmaceutical molecule is used to bypass in vitro assays and do drug discovery in whole animal models, which is one step closer to human clinical trials. Aptogenesis involves the process of selection and propagation, similar to what occurs in evolution or natural selection, but on a molecular scale. A large population or library of molecules are screened with a target in mind in order to directly select the molecules that bind to that target and discard the molecules that do not. The bound molecules are then propagated and are allowed to survive for another round of selection. After multiple rounds of selection and amplification, only the candidates that best bind to the target eventually dominate the population of molecules. The selection process ensures the best or, quote, fittest candidates are enriched with the highest affinities for the target. If the molecules under question are chemically stable enough to survive in an organism, then selection can be performed in a whole animal model. We can bypass in vitro or test tube selection and do selection directly in vivo to generate potential drug candidates. A healthy animal, such as a rat, is first challenged with a library size of 10 trillion different molecules. The library is administered through an injection, nasal or oral delivery depending on the chemical nature and stability of the molecules. It is within the healthy animal that the molecules are exposed to an environment addressing absorption, distribution, metabolism, excretion, and toxicity. Only the unbound or unabsorbed molecules that linger around in the bloodstream are then administered to a rat model exhibiting the disease or condition of interest. The library of molecules may contain unique molecular solutions which bind to the diseased site. Extraction of the pathological tissue permits recovery of molecules that concentrate at the disease site and exclude all others that naturally bind to normal tissue. Initially, these molecular solutions that bind selectively to diseased tissue may represent a small fraction of the entire library. However, after multiple rounds of selection and amplification, they quickly dominate the population. Following recovery and purification, the surviving molecules are then amplified and administered to a healthy rat once again. Only the unbound or unabsorbed molecules within the bloodstream are recovered for continuous rounds of challenge in order to increase the number of molecules with the highest affinity and or pharmacological activity against the disease or pathology of interest. Again, this cycle includes the isolation and processing of the pathological tissue containing any absorbed molecules. This is followed by amplification of the molecules which are then administered into a healthy animal for reselection. 
the cycle is repeated again in a negative or counter-selection step. A blood sample containing the unabsorbed molecules is then withdrawn from the healthy animal. The unabsorbed molecules are again administered into the diseased animal for positive selection. The drug development process, which involves repeated rounds of negative and positive selection, increase library specificity. Eventually, the majority of the library becomes enriched with highly specific molecules. At this point, the library is sorted and characterized for drug candidates. The ideal drug exhibits absolutely no interaction on healthy tissue and high specificity in diseased tissue. Aptibodies have a large chemical diversity to safely assume that a large library of these molecules may contain one or more solutions with drug-like activity. In essence, after multiple rounds of selection, the progression of selection results in a gradual disappearance of the pathological marker. This is shown by the initial round exhibiting the pathological marker and the nth or final round showing normal tissue with no sign of the pathology. The chemical makeup of aptibodies has a unique advantage over all other drug platforms, such as small organics, proteins, and antibodies, in that they can be easily amplified and survive selection in vivo. Aptibodies are made of a stable RNA scaffold or aptamer that is associated with one or more various functional groups. The aptamer component provides a decodable template for combinatorial selection and amplification. Some of the various functional groups include carbohydrates or sugars used for specificity and tissue targeting, fatty acids, which allow for tissue delivery and bioavailability, amino acids for imparting various enzymatic activity and specificity, and small organics, which allow for interesting chemical activity or to increase specificity of a known drug. The variety of functional groups attached to the naked RNA scaffold increases the structural complexity and chemical reactivity, forming a super-enhanced aptamer called an aptibody. Any number or combination of functional groups can be attached, resulting in a randomized library or large collection of aptibody macromolecules, each exhibiting a unique function, such as target binding and or pharmacological activity. Each aptibody molecule has a unique form and function able to act as the right key to unlock the answer for a specific target disease. This collection of aptibodies constitutes a library of 10 trillion possibilities. Once more, unlike the traditional test tube assays, deciphering the disease mechanisms before initiating drug screening programs is completely avoided. This method promises to significantly reduce the time and cost from lab bench to clinical trials. As a consequence of this in vivo method of drug discovery, all of the disadvantages that plague the laborious and time-consuming conventional process of drug discovery are either significantly reduced or completely avoided. As long as an animal model exists, aptibodies can be developed against a variety of pathologies or conditions. This new technology will ultimately transform the way drugs are discovered. Aptogen bioengineering novel solutions for medicine, research, and industry.